IndyCar coverage is brought to you by the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix. Get your tickets in the link in the description and save 20%. Well, welcome back. It's been a little while. Uh, we're here at Worldwide Technologies Raceway here in Gateway. No track activity today, but we did have a media bullpen where we got to talk about a few things with the drivers. Obviously, with no track activity, it's kind of hard to understand exactly what to expect. But someone who's a really good source on, you know, not only what to expect, but also had some really spicy thoughts about the direction of IndyCar oval racing and where it needs to go is one Scott Dixon. And I just want to let the master speak. I think you guys should be listening. Honestly, it depends on how it races, you know, whether you can get that second lane to come in. Uh, I think if, if IndyCar did go to the lower boost setting to the 130 uh, that we run at Indy, I think would make it the racing a lot better, especially because you could get, you know, hopefully side by side through uh, three and four. Um, you know, hopefully that's maybe not off the table, even though we're not starting with it. But um, yeah, it, it will depend on the tire. I don't imagine there's going to be much degradation throughout the race. You know, they brought a uh, harder tire than what we had here last year, uh, just to compensate for the extra weight um, from the hybrid. So, yeah, a lot of unknowns, I guess. Yeah. A super interesting comment that you made that I want to pick up on and kind of follow up on is that you think that with the higher downforce, lower horsepower would actually make the racing better. We we seem to always hear that it's always you got to have the most horsepower and the least downforce for good racing. But why do you, why is that opposite here at Gateway? I think that was always just a Penske theory. Uh, that went on for many years. Um, I think we've seen how that plays out. Uh, you know, I think if you've got high dig, that's maybe true. You know, I think in an Iowa situation, yeah, you can burn the rear tires off. Uh, but here, you know, you kind of, the theory behind that, going slower on the straights makes the straight longer, right? Mm. So if you can make three and four flat, then you've got, you know, a massive straight out of two that you can get a big draft and then try and pass, you know, going into three or, or down the front straight into one. Uh, you know, so that's that's kind of what that is. If, if you can make three and four a lot easier, you know, that's why they've added the downforce to try and get that second lane to come in. Will that be enough? I think with 130 lower boost, that would definitely help, but, you know, we'll have to see, uh, you know, where we end up. Well, it sounds like that's something you're advocating for, to go to a lower boost. I mean, and you mentioned it might be still be on the table. I mean, what, what can you do as a driver to kind of push for that? It was definitely a topic of conversation at the Nashville tire test um, because they ran 130 there, and, and I think it brought the cars closer together. Uh, you know, once the speeds are up, you know, the tire can only take so much, and then once you get into traffic, you just kind of spread the cars out even more once the speeds go up. So yeah, it's uh, it seemed like IndyCar were all for it. You know, I don't know uh, what the hang-up has been so far. Probably a manufacturer thing. It's it's a big change, obviously, the week before the race. Um, you know, but I think for, for a group of drivers that have maybe been you know, kind of playing in that part of it, want to see it. Something that seems like it's been so difficult at the oval races, particularly here, but we saw it at Iowa now, is that once you get to the back of the field, if you're running up front, you really can't do anything. Is there, is there anything that, that kind of can be done to make lapping cars easier? Or is it just the fact that everybody's so close, everybody's got the same stuff, that you really can't make a, as much of a difference to, to pass someone? Yeah, the biggest problem is Firestone make a really good tire. <laughs> Honestly, that's, you know, the issue. You know, I think at Iowa, you maybe had two tenths or three tenths of a second degradation from lap one through to lap 80 or 90. Uh, where you could go faster on the last 10 if people started peeling off, you know. Um, the great races that we saw at Iowa were three to four seconds of degradation over a stint. <clears throat> that's what you got to see, you know. you got to make sure that the car is going to go a lot faster pitting early to get tires as opposed to using all the fuel that's on the tank. Um, so that's that's the key. I think Firestone know that. You know, they're a, they're a tire company. They want to make sure their product looks good. Uh, but obviously, as you know, a, in, you know, a fan of motor racing and an IndyCar fan myself, you know, you want to see great racing. Um, so yeah. Is, last thing, and this is maybe a dumb question. Is there like I know there used to be like a driver council where you come together and say like, hey, the three of us. Obviously, I'm sure you'd be a part of that. Um, want this? Is it, does that still happen? What's the communication like? I guess. Nah, that was dissolved. Yeah. There was uh, there was a party that wasn't too happy about that, so it's, uh, it got shut down. So you've heard from Scott Dixon, and I am very curious and interested about his comments because they're pretty spicy. And I think uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion about them in the comments section below. Let's hear from some more drivers about what they expect and some of their expectations for here at Worldwide Technologies Raceway. So you mentioned higher downforce. A lot of the drivers have been talking about it. You know, more downforce typically makes oval racing better. 
what's the thought process of more downforce here? Is that something that you guys kind of were lacking in the racing department here the last couple of years, or is it not going to make too much of a difference? I don't really know. I, I think what it potentially gives you the opportunity to do is stay side by side for longer on restarts, maybe. Um, I think the amount of drag maybe makes the toe more important and, and the draft more aggressive. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I still think because, you know, this entire lap is based on how good you get through one and two and now three and four is, is flat, almost flat. Um, but also the drag creates a way more aggressive fuel consumption. So, you know, three stops it, from what we see is like very not realistic and who knows what, you know, who knows how that'll play out. So I, I, I think I, we saw some comments after the test that were like maybe a little bit disheartening. But I don't think we should really judge that until we get into it and, and see how kind of tires degrade. So we'll see. Uh, I was happy with what we generally unloaded with at Iowa. So if we come in here with maybe more downforce, hopefully that's just better. Uh, that being said, it could be better for everybody. So it might, you know, limit um, the opportunities maybe. I think the other slight downside of that is if they've come with more downforce and they're kind of instigating it. Uh, you know, it seems like Deg's already going to be good, and if you add downforce, the car's not sliding around. Deg might be even better, which I don't know if that's exactly great for the show. You know, in previous years here, they've done the you know alternate compound, but obviously, I don't know why, but decided not to do that. You know, this weekend. So I don't know. I think um, you know, just in generally, I, I, there's I think there's like two train of thoughts. I'm I don't really know all the science behind it, but sometimes people say that. With more downforce, it stresses the tire because you you know you're cornering quicker, therefore more load, and sometimes you can actually get more deg because of it. Um, uh. I don't think it's going to change that much how you drive because now we have more weight as well, harder tires. So I think in a way they're going to cancel each other out a bit, but uh, it could be in the race. I mean, we never know. Like sure. if if one lane opens up, like that downforce is going to be huge. Uh, and I think that's why they went that direction to hopefully have some more, you know, uh, dual lane racing. Uh, I think still on the restarts there will be like normally here you can you can run for like three four laps on the high line, but and then he normally singles out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's honestly I I think you kind of have to just drive and see where where it goes. I didn't test her. The ones that did test her kind of said that it's going to be hard to pass. So I think um, I, I think drivers will have more confidence to run that higher group. Uh, just, you know, as a mental thing, knowing that you have all the downforce, it is going to be more likely to run outside compared to last year. And even in the end of the race, uh, uh, David was passing on the outside, not just on a restart, but also, you know, a few laps in. So if that was the case, it's never really been a tire deck race, this one. So I think now it has become more of a, yeah, I think if, everybody, if everybody's on the inside, you can run the outside, you know, you have the, the, the air advantage, the clean air. So I think, I think there's going to be some outside, outside racing. How do, how do you kind of, you know, for la I'm going to be a little bit dirty, nut up and get up there in the in the outside groove? I mean, what as a driver, how do you convince yourself I can go out there? There is grip out there. I can pass on the outside. Um, well, there's always a few guys that just go nuts right away. But also, we have that uh, highline session yes. where nobody really wants to take much risk, but you you get to to, to practice that highline and. It helps, and you know you you can feel the grip. It's like driving in the rain almost when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, dirty air. You know you can just feel in one groove. There's going to be more grip because you have you have no dirty air, and you know you just feel the car and, and, and go millisecond by millisecond. But you'll feel things out as long you know you can feel everything throughout the whole corner. That you can kind of adjust. But I think uh, if you can feel the grip, it's going to be fine. It's the first time that I will drive an IndyCar somewhere that I've tested, okay. which I think is going to be big and okay. will be quite helpful. Um, yeah, I've raced here in Indy Next and in Indy Pro 2000, and um, yeah, like I haven't raced an IndyCar here, but I know the track well, and um, it's one of my favorites, actually, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. And so... 
Tomorrow, there is actually on-track action, both practice sessions as well as qualifying for IndyCar, so we'll have a pretty good idea, although not a total picture of what to expect on Saturday evening. Saturday evening race, not necessarily a night race, but it should be cooler, as you heard from some of the other drivers. Hopefully, we'll get a good show with the additional downforce, and hey, maybe if Scott Dixon gets his way, lower boost. Who would have thought? That maybe makes the racing better. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow to find out who's going to be fast and who's going to be slow at Gateway.